We just published this piece in Tehran Times uh, and we are uh, trying to analyze uh, the relationship between Iran and the Trump world order. Also, we're trying to um, uh, make some proposals to Iran in terms of how they should be managing uh, its relationship with the United States uh, so it can further avoid escalation. We're also arguing the president's uh, foreign policy is very, very unusual. Perhaps it's the most unusual foreign policy that we've seen since 1945. Very different from what other presidents has done in terms of foreign policy and its implementations uh, from Washington. If you also look at the Trump team, you can see his inner circle is not just there to uh, govern, but they're there to actually shake up the global governance order that we have seen in the past 50 years. So they are there to make a huge change, make a tectonic change, and that change would simply, uh, uh, in a way, change the way the American foreign policy will be conducted in Trump era. As we're seeing this gigantic change in the White House uh, in terms of foreign policy, uh, we, can we can assume other nations will be reacting differently to Mr. Trump and his administrations. Perhaps some countries will take a more uh, aggressive posture and try to react and try to, in a way, um, uh, not cooperate with the United States. Some nations are trying to build new alliances and reduce their dependency of the, uh, on the United States. Some nations are trying to be neutral or perhaps find ways to get closer to the United States government and also develop and forge new alliances and new partnerships. So looking at all these reactions that uh, Trump administration could in a way um, uh, cause uh, in the international community, uh, here's a word, word, of, uh, word of advice for Iran. Uh, what Iran should do uh, in Trump world order and how do they should be reacting, perhaps more constructively, how they should be responding. We are making an argument for what we call the strategic flexibility. What does that mean? That essentially means that Iran should not try too hard to forge alliances in a short uh, time period. They also should not be trying too hard to, in a way, oppose the United States. What they should be doing, they should be contemplating and rethinking and rethinking and also be flexible in that process in terms of what are the future alliances that they can forge, not just from a geopolitical standpoint, but also from a geoeconomic standpoint, which would be more relevant in the decades to come. If you're Tehran, you have to address the elephants in the room, and that would be China, major power in Asia, and that would be Russia, major power in the European continent. So what we're arguing is Iran should not be clo getting close to one or the other. Rather, Tehran's strategy or flexible strategy ought to be uh, developing and maintaining and expanding two uh, parallel strategies, meaning reaching out to Beijing, at the same time reaching out to Moscow. We call that hedging. Like we have hedging in finance and business, we should have hedging in geopolitics. We have to remember, the nature of hedging in, is in geopolitics is inherently different from hedging in geoeconomics. So Tehran should find a right balance between hedging in geopolitics and uh, hedging in geoeconomics. Iran should be acting more like a new and rising emerging power, which means rather than solely opposing the United States, which is a counterproductive policy altogether, they should be trying to develop new partnerships based on mutual interests when it comes to economic interests. Just look at the story of Asia today, or Eurasia, the story of integration. Iran could be a humongous and significant player in Eurasian integration and part of the broader connectivity between Europe and Asia. What they should be doing, they should be hedging, they should exercise a strategic flexibility, but they also should recognize that the world is changing and the Trump world order 
is just a prelude to that change. It's better not to be trapped in the Trump world order and think about the next 20 to 30 years and developing a coherent geopolitical and geoeconomic strategy that could in a way safeguard Iran's position in the Middle East, but more important in West Asia.